Hi, this is Drew Loker, and today I'm going to show you how to begin your animation project. Begin first in your Google Classroom. Click on Classwork. Click on View More. And find your animation assignment. For this assignment, the project begins outside of Google Classroom, and the project will be exported and uploaded in the correct format. So for now, you only need to open up the instructions. Please review the instructions, including the application that we're going to be looking for on your desktop called Serif Draw Plus. I'm going to do a Windows key D to hide and reveal my desktop. The application is a circle with a pencil running through it to launch to Draw Plus. My application is already running, so I'll double click on it. And mine is already launched into an example that I'm going to walk you through, and then we'll begin one from scratch. Our objective is twofold. The first is to do a simple animation with an object that we'll place onto our work surface and then move across the page, creating frames. I'm going to do a quick preview and then explain what you're seeing. We can stop the animation and step through each frame, and we see that each frame matches the frame that we've created down here at the bottom. So our goal is to create an object, duplicate it as a new frame, and then change some aspect of that second, third, and subsequent frames. So looking at the timeline at the bottom, we can see that initially a B is placed on the left side of the screen. I cloned the frame to create a second frame. And when at first you first clone it, the object can be selected and moved. Then the frame is cloned again and again, and different objects are moved. As the bee moves across the page from each frame that's created, we've now created an animation. This is much how any movie today is created, as with any cartoon. Even your cell phones record in multiple frames per second. You can record at either 30, 60, or 120 frames per second, and then slow that action down to produce, produce slow motion. So in this case right here, we can control the frame rate. So let's start from scratch and show you how to do a basic animation. When you first open up the application, it will put you into a wizard. So I'm going to start as if I'm from a new wizard. If you have already opened up the application and you've closed the project and opened up a new one, you'll go to new stop frame animation. You can convert a drawing to a new frame stop frame animation but it's easier to start with the correct dimensions. We'll go from the control N, new dialog box, new startup wizard. And we'll see the second option down is start new animation. I'm gonna click on landscape, and then I'm gonna click on custom page setup. I'm going to pop up the custom, and I'm gonna to go to 1080p high definition which is going to automatically turn it to a wide orientation. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. For this project, you do not need to create objects from scratch. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to find some tabs, effects, layers, and gallery. You can go ahead and click on the gallery. And you'll see that there are quite a few different types of objects that you can select. And there's even a pop-up of different categories. So let's just sim uh, simply choose an animal. And you notice that I already chose a bumblebee. So let's try something different like a dog. And we'll just click and drag it and move it over. If at any time you're prompted to upgrade, simply close out of it. And if it doesn't let you do that, then you can't do that particular action. 
In this case, it just wanted me to upgrade, but it is going to let us use the dog, so that's good. Sometimes it will not let you use the tool. And this is a free program, and it does allow us to experiment with animation. So like our first couple of projects where we used the vector graphics, starting first with your autobiography and then poster one, when you click on the sides of an uh, object, you can resize it. If you click on the side, you can skewer, distort your image. So you generally don't want to do that. Click only the corners so that your object stays dimensional or proportional. So I can move my object around on the page. And for this first animation, keep it simple and just get the idea of creating a timeline. So I'm going to create and put the dog where I want it. And then I'm going to simply clone frame. And at first you don't notice the difference. You do know that there are two frames now. And if that panel is hidden, you can reveal it by clicking that little pop up. Okay. So what do we do different on the second frame? Well, we can control the dog and move it over. Now, one of the vocabulary words or focus concepts that you were introduced prior to the start or at the beginning of this assignment is the term onion skinning. With onion skinning turned on, when you click on the second frame, it shows you the previous frame and you can turn the onion skinning off. It just shows you where the last frame is located on that particular page or on that particular frame. So we're going to go ahead and click on another clone frame. And this time we're going to move it over again. Let's turn our onion skinning on. And this way you can kind of see the progression of your motion. Let's go ahead and clone the frame again. And we'll move it over. Clone frame. Move it over. And you can see that this is actually a really easy assignment to get a basic animation. Now your grade will be based on an advanced animation. Now I'm just going through making a few. I'm not going to keep doing this so that we can get on to something else. All right, so we'll go ahead and do a preview and we'll see that our dog moves across the page. And that's a lot of fun. And this is how all your fun cartoon movies are based. Except we need to be able to move some object on that dog to be able to go to advanced animations. So we're going to go back to the second frame. By the way, we can also control how long each frame is on the screen, including the milliseconds per frame. And that can be varied so that the animation speeds up and slows down based on what you want the dog to do, like come to a stop and then start moving again. But let's keep it simple for right now, and we're going to go to the second frame. And this time I'm going to click on the object, and I'm going to click on Ungroup. Now we're going to zoom in on the object. I'm holding down the control wheel, and I'm scrolling at the same time, the control rather, and I'm scrolling. And I'm going to then scroll over and move to where we can see our object. And in this case, I'm going to turn Onion Skinning off, so I see only the current selected frame. And I'm going to click on the dog's tongue, and I can either make the tongue bigger, smaller, I can move it over. Now you'll notice here that the tongue is actually two objects. So you might want to use the shift select to select multiple objects. You can also use the marquee selection tool, which is another one of the focus concepts. Watch that again as I drag across the entire tongue so that I'm getting both the tongue. Now if you click and drag across more, you'll get more, including the entire face. So the marquee selection tool works by clicking and dragging across multiple areas. Or you can hold down the shift key and click on the different objects. And in that case, we got both aspects of the tongue. If I click outside of one of the resize boxes, I can rotate the tongue and move the tongue over and up. I can also move his eyes around. And then as we go to each frame, we would ne then need to ungroup. So when we get to the next frame, it is back to a grouped graphic. However, if you clone 
an ungrouped graphic, when you clone it, it will be ungrouped. So just be aware if you go through your animation and you create a bunch of grouped objects, that's fine. Until you start trying to animate, you do need to ungroup. So uh, there are different reasons to do either one. On the next one, I'm going to click on ungroup, hold down the control key, scroll in. This time I'm going to move his eyes a different direction. And I'm going to mark key across the tongue and maybe move the tongue back to a different spot and rotate it. And then we'll go back to our beginning frame and do our preview. And it's hard to see on, on such a small view right here, but the uh, animation would actually show that his tongue moved a couple different frames, a, a couple different places there. So your assignment is to first do just a simple little basic animation and go ahead and save it. Save it to your L drive. And when you first save it, it's going to be saved as a DPA. That's a Serif Draw Plus animation file. Find your L drive by twirling open your PC and you should see your L drive down lower below the local disk designated by your ID number and the L drive. The computer I'm working on does not have an L drive. And failing that, you can always save it to your picture folder as long as you know where to put it back later or find it. So once the document has been saved, you may move on to an advanced animation. Don't forget to name your document very specifically, dog animation, whatever it is that you want to call it by your first or last name. And uh, that'll be good right there. All right. So when you want to begin your more advanced animation, you can bring additional objects in. Let's say we go from the animals to um, a different topic, like uh, let's go to home. Not a good option. So dig around until you find something that you want to find. And lots of students have found lots of cool things. Look through until you find one that you like. Let's say we put a beach house. And in this case, we're going to drag out the beach house. Now, one of the things that you're going to be graded on is an advanced animation that has multiple objects that are moving as well as the scale of the objects changing through the course of the scene. For example, the dog may move across the page as the beach house gets smaller into the background. Now, when you first create the second object on an advanced animation, you'll notice that the object is missing from the second frame. So you can either start from scratch with a brand new animation, or you can add that beach house by simply copying on it, clicking on it and copying it, go to the second frame and pasting. And this time I'm going to make the beach house a little bit smaller so that as the dog walks across, and then we're going to click this and copy it and go to the second frame and paste. And this time I will make the beach house even smaller into the background. And then I'm going to click and copy paste it. And so as the dog walks across the page, we're going to copy this. And technically, since you don't copy anything else, you could just paste, 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 paste. But then you would have to resize more and more. And then we're going to paste again. And we're going to keep resizing, paste again, keep resizing, paste again. Oops, let's not do that. Undo, go to the next one, paste. And we can keep going as we move it across the page. So let's see what we've come up with so far. We'll go to the preview. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is just a quick sample right here that I've accomplished in just the 14 minutes. When you're done, you will actually do another file save. And this time, I'm, oh, I did not mean to do a file save. I should have done a save as, because I do have a second one. This is going to be dog animation with house by Loker. And we'll go ahead and save it. So when we're ready to turn the assignment in, we will have to watch a second uh, video uh, as far as the export instructions. Hope this helps get you up and running. Enjoy the animation before we move into the next project.